the worldview characteristics of a religionist, which is obviously religionism, religiosity, uh, religious extremism is born out of chronic right brain dominance, as we've already seen. So we all know this jackass. We've all met this jackass. Okay. We've all met the Jesus freak. We've all met the Allah freak. We've all met, you know, the, uh, uh Jewish, uh, Torah, uh, law, insane fuck. Okay. We've all met them. All right. Cause there's no shortage of them out there. Okay. No shortage of them. These are people who really belong in mental asylums. Really. If you ask me, as opposed to walking the street, trying to convince people of their absolute nonsense, garbage view of reality. So look at the worldview characteristics. Spirit is primary. God is all powerful. So matter is ultimately meaningless. Okay. What ha I've heard people say this, that believe the new age variant of this religion. You know, not, I'm not just talking about Christianity. I'm talking about right brain imbalanced religion. You could throw a new ager over there and it would be the same thing. It would just, just be a different image. Okay. Spirit and is primary creation. God, whatever you want to call it is all powerful. The physical world is evil or it should be ascetically shunned at the very least. I have people, I heard someone say recently, all matter is meaningless. The 3D world is just a total illusion that doesn't matter. We should try to ascetically shun it. We shouldn't take any action. We shouldn't try to change anything here. We shouldn't try to impose our will upon it, et cetera, so forth. Imagine, imagine they think nothing that happens here matters. Wow. Are you lost? Lost. That is the epitome of Satanism. That is not spirituality at all. That is what Satanists would have you do. And that's why Satanists wrote a lot of the book of the books of the modern spiritualist movement. They've, they've bragged about it to many other people other than me. You know, you can go back into other people's works that talked about the, that dark occultists were going to take over occult publishing houses. I mean, uh, spiritual publishing houses. I taught, I was told when I was involved in satanic grottos in my tri-state area, I was told that they were taking over publishing houses and they were going to put all kinds of spiritual nonsense out into the public domain to muddy the waters of what real spirituality is told out in the open, plainly, blatantly, like they were just proud of it because they are. And they don't just talk, folks. They do what they say they're going to do. And they did it. Because what people believe today, they have their head lodged so firmly up their ass, they're probably never going to get it out till the day they die. And even then they won't get it out. And death, as I've said many times before, is no cure for ignorance. They'll probably be reborn and still in the ignorati. Okay? So... God demands strict human obedience to his arbitrary and often conflicting set of rules and goals in the physical world should not be focused on. Rather, we should focus on the promise after life with God. So every single one of us knows the religious freak, every single one, because there's no shortage of them. Okay. Now, this is why most people in the freedom movement distrust, dislike, and or outright hate religion and rightfully so. Okay. However, what is their strategy once they recognize that this is a controlled paradigm and a control system? Most of them go, well, all forms of spirituality and consciousness are fraudulent. And therefore I have to become an atheist that says, I don't believe in the existence of any form of a spiritual dimension. Okay. That's part of the dialectic of the social engineers to get us to accept that we don't have a soul and that we, there is no such thing as spirit or consciousness. That's the dialectic. And many people fall into the di dialectic as did I, I fell into the atheism dialectic and that's what pushed me into Satanism. And in a way I wouldn't have changed it. I wouldn't change it. Okay. What I would change is other people's rigidity in holding on to it. Because while I held on to it for a length of time, I still wasn't in such ego that I held on to it till the day I died. 
Okay. But what had to change it for me was recognizing that I was actually taking part in the enslavement of all my fellow brothers and sisters. Okay. That's what had to change it for me. And I had to suffer for that mindset to change. See, most people will never change their mindset because they, they're, they're so entrenched in ego run amok that they cannot admit that they were ever wrong. They're incapable of making an apology to themselves, to other people, and to creation. And they cannot say the words, I was wrong. See, I was never that kind of a person, ever. Never, ever, once. For, I would say while I was a Satanist for a time, I latched onto that. But really, if you showed me alternative evidence, I would say, I need to look into that. And then once I looked into it, that, and you could, you could confirm this, you could ask people who know me personally, if I do this in real life, okay? When alternative evidence is shown to me, and it is convincing, not if it has billions of holes in it that can be easily, uh, you know, brought forward and shown to be holes in the model or paradigm, but if it convinces me and it holds sound through rigorous testing, I will say, I had not considered that. Thank you for bringing that new information to my attention. And I'm going to adjust my worldview accordingly. And if you don't believe that I do that and have done that endlessly, ask people who know me in my personal life, if you could find them on social media and they'll tell you the truth about, it. I won't put any words in their mouth. Let them tell you. Okay. So I'm not just saying that I do that. All right, so what people fall into here is the exact opposite dialectic. They think because religionism isn't the answer, that atheism must be the answer. When it's only another completely contrived, set up part of the dialectic to hold people's minds enslaved. So the left brain dominant atheist thinks like this, and this is our mascot for, for this show. You know, you saw him in... Uh, I believe it was um, uh, Anarchy in the Occult Part 1 that I gave at Anarchapoco in 2018. Okay? Uh, this is the mascot uh, that I'm putting forward for atheism because uh, uh, he looks like a nice, righteous, smug little prick, doesn't he? Okay? So, you know, and this is what most people who take on this worldview look like and sound like and think like and, you know, in general behave like. That they're so above everybody else that they have it figured out when you don't have anything figured out, boy. You don't have anything figured out, girl. Nothing. Your mind is so small. It's like, you know, the, whole, the old adage, uh, there is more in heaven and earth than is dreamt of in your philosophy. Okay? Shakespeare, you know, he's saying your mind is so small you can't even conceive the wonders that are out there in the universe at all. And this is one of the things atheism will hold you in a very tiny mindset that is incapable of perceiving the wonders that are all around us. The worldview characteristics of atheism is that matter is primary and that there is no such thing as spirit. There is no such thing as God or spirit does not exist. The physical world is all there is. So if we just continue to smash uh, subatomic particles down to finer and finer constituent elements, we're going to get to that God particle and it's going to explain everything about the entire universe. Yeah. Good luck with that. You know, not only is that not going to work to explain the intended outcome or result, it's probably going to end up in very destructive forms of energy that are going to blow a, uh, blow a large portion of the earth up or maybe the whole thing. Atheists think that only the physical laws of the universe exist, but there are no laws that govern behavioral consequences. So there's no such thing as natural law to them. And that is why they're destroying freedom. That is why people in the freedom movement, it's one of the main reasons that people in the freedom movement that subscribe to the polarization dialectic called atheism, the religion called atheism, are destroying, helping to destroy human freedom without even knowing it. And they think they're liberators. They actually believe they're liberators in this cause or movement, so-called movement. It's not moving anywhere. Never has been. Okay. We haven't formed the movement. We haven't formed the true community that is actually trying to move uh, a weight from one place to another. They don't understand. People who subscribe to this worldview don't understand the great work. They don't know what it is. They don't know what's required to do it. Because they're lost. They're soul sick. 
This is what soul sickness is comprised of. That you've gone so far in the left brain imbalance that you, you, you have lost really your ability to commune with spirit and to commune with any higher form of consciousness than your own limited consciousness. And that's why people in this mindset don't really have true compassion. That's why they don't really understand natural law as what, what is in nature objectively as the true arbiter of the difference between right behavior and wrong behavior. And that's why they get a lot of it wrong. That's why they will advocate for things that aren't rights to, for human beings to do. So when you think only physical laws exist, but there is no such thing as spiritual laws that govern behavioral consequence, you're going down a very slippery path. Atheists thinks, think that science, and I wrap it in quotes, is, is the arbiter of truth. That only if there's some scientific peer-reviewed journal that says, yes, this is how it is, that that's how it is. Well, there's a lot science gets wrong too. Just because science hasn't understand certain workings of nature doesn't mean that those workings of nature don't actually exist and aren't working. You know, science doesn't know everything because science comes from human beings, the methodology of science. So there are always going to be human error and flaw within it. So we can't like quote unquote, trust it implicitly forever. You know, you could, you could trust the scientific methodology up to a point, but there are always some things that we're not going to be aware of variables and calculations we haven't factored in. Okay. Because we have limited perception and our measuring instruments have limited perception. And there are things in the universe that exist well outside of the limiting defined boundaries of the human perception capabilities through the senses and even out far outside of our measuring implementations through scientific instrumentation that we use to extend our five senses. Okay. So we have to understand science is not the arbiter of truth, but this is what atheists think it is. And that's why I put science in quotes. Real knowledge is not limited by this belief system. Okay. Uh, what I would accurately say that they believe in is scientism, meaning that they look at scientific institutions here on earth as the be all and end all and the arbiters of truth. And finally, they believe that consciousness is either purely mechanical and existing as electromagnetic fluctuations in the brain, or it is meaningless altogether. Again, as I said, I've had people in the freedom so-called community come up to me and say, consciousness is a meaningless term to me. I don't even want to discuss it as a word. I, I, nothing that you can say about consciousness has any meaning to me at all. Imagine this. Yeah. So they wouldn't even, a person like that would not even start watching what on earth is happening when I started talking about consciousness as the solution to the problems of the world and to the problems of the self-inflicted suffering of humanity. They wouldn't even start that journey of the discovery of knowledge of who we are and how we create the reality that we create because there's no such thing as consciousness. It has no meaning to them, but you're going to be free. Don't worry about it. Yeah. Let's switch back over. So, these are the two polarization dialectics that we have to choose from. Just like we have Republican and Democrat, conservative and liberal. You know, we have all these what, Coke and Pepsi, McDonald's and Burger King. Oh my God, they might throw Wendy's in here from time to time. That's, that's the Libertarian Party, you know? I mean, when are people going to learn how the divide and conquer strategy works? I mean, I can't, I can barely believe folks. It's 2019. I went over this in 2010 and hardly anybody understands it to the point that they're actually living it nine years later, almost a fucking decade later that I have to revisit divide and conquer over two shows. People should be embarrassed, embarrassed. Okay. That's where we should be at. We should be in a state of embarrassment and dare I say it, shame. 
Shame on people for being this lazy and falling for dial polarization dialectics this easily. I mean, I would have thought people in this community were made of harder material, were made of tougher stuff. They're little fucking boys and girls that can be easily swayed. And then you have other jerk-offs that want to say, I'm a cult leader because I'm trying to explain to people how it really works. I'm not asking anybody to believe anything. I'm telling you belief is the beginning of the destruction of all freedom, ass. Again, people don't even understand how stupid they sound. Their mouth opens and liquid shit pours out. And they don't even see how stupid they sound. They don't hear it. Because they have in their minds what they want to believe. And that's it. And there's no room for anything else. There's no room for real understanding. For penetrating into real knowledge. They already know everything there is to know. And that's it. And that's the height of hubris and the epitome of ignorance. So here's what we're given. Oh, and by the way, yeah, I'd be a really, you know, just as another aside, I'd be a really effective cult leader, right? Because I explained all of the dynamics and all of the mental manipulation techniques of cults over many shows. Yeah. So I'm a great cult leader because I've told people the techniques of cults. Yeah. Yeah. Makes sense, doesn't it? <sighs> Telling you, man, if these people had a brain cell, it would die of loneliness. So this is the dialectic we're given, right? This is it. Here's your two choices. Here's your Coke and Pepsi. Here's your Republican and Democrat. Okay? But, and this is where most people fall. Now, th just think about this dynamic to the people in the viewing audience. How many people in the world fall into one of these two categories? Would you not say that it is over 99% of human beings that either have a religious belief system or are atheists? You'd have some people, you'd have a small sliver somewhere, maybe, okay, I'll say maybe 1% that will say they're spiritual and they don't, they're not an atheist, but they don't subscribe to any religion. But it's a sliver, if that, if not a paper thin slice, okay? So, as with all polarization dialectics, they can ultimately be seen through if our consciousness is high enough and we can go to the middle path. We can go to the middle pillar. We can go to the center path, the center point. However you want to look at it, the point of balance between these two hallmarks of extremism and polarity. And that's where they can be reconciled. And that is that natural law is the key to human freedom. If we understand that there is a free will component, I'm going to back up a couple of slides because I want to go back to the worldview schism slide and explain the, the, the middle path between these two or the truth, which leads to enlightenment, to true enlightenment once we have that knowledge, is that there is a random component to creation and there is also simultaneously a determined component to creation or a deterministic component, however you want to word it. And natural law is the deterministic component and it works hand in hand with free will. So there's not just natural law, there is natural law and free will, which is the random side. Okay. When we understand that we have the free will to behave however we want, but we do not have the free will to be isolated from the consequences of how we behave. There will always be consequences for action depending on whether you act in harmony with the laws of morality or not. That doesn't mean there is not free will. It means that is a hot pot on the stove. There is a flame raging under it. There is water in the pot. It is what it is. That's a hot pot. That's a hot stove. That's a hot flame. That's hot water. That's the state of it. it. That is law. It is in that state of reality right now. If you do a certain thing as a result of your free will, meaning you have the free will to walk over to that boiling hot pot and put your hand in that boiling water, 
That is within your free will choice to do that. And a consequence will be delivered unto you if you make that free will choice. That is how natural law works. That is a natural state. The heat that is being delivered to that pot to make that water boil is a natural state that exists in the 3D world. You walk over to it, you put your hand in it, that's a free will decision and a consequence will be delivered and it will not be pretty. Okay? And it works like that flawlessly all the time. No matter who wants to say there's some supernatural being that can do that and not receive the consequences of doing it. You're full of shit anyway. And it works that way 100% of the time flawlessly. Unless you're performing some nonsense party trick like putting some chemical agent on your hand. That has some kind of like a, you know, pr protects you from the boiling point of water. I'm not talking about any kind of trickery. I'm talking about just doing it regularly in the natural world. You'll see what will happen. You'll receive minimum second, probably third degree burns where your skin will be blistering. Okay. So we have to understand that there is both a random component, which is free will and it's working in tandem with the deterministic component, which is the natural laws of creation.